My name is Aysen Karachasin and I'm going to present to you my project proposal, Common Sense, an auditory visual sense sharing network. Common Sense is a network of devices that enable individuals to share their visual and auditory senses. This work investigates the neurological and social effects on sharing senses and processing multiple points of perception simultaneously. The network consists of units that receive and transmit the visual and auditory information from one user and broadcasts it to, another, to other users through this network. These units display the received audio-visual information through a device worn inside of the mouth, using audible bone vibra vibration and electrode vibrotactile stimulation of the tongue. Using non-invasive sensory substitution methods, common sense facilitates sharing a vision and a discrete addition to the palette of the senses. This project explores human perception, sharing it, and the brain's capability of processing multiple realities simultaneously. It arises from the curiosity of wanting to see the world from someone else's eyes. The idea of sharing experiences drives the social networking virtual platforms that permeate our daily lives today. Think of common sense as a real-time physical sensory channel network that reveals the full potential of sharing our senses. This project will be created using methods developed for sensory prosthetic devices such as the BrainPort by Wicab, Inc. Next time you're in a concert, you can borrow the tall guy's eyes to see the stage through your tongue. Process. Conceptual research. Sensory substitution. Sensory prosthetics networks, brain elasticity, extending the body, disembodiment, privacy, technical research, hardware, brain port, display resolution, wireless networks, perceptual reception acuity, hygiene, and costs. This image on the right is of Bakurita's uh, first iteration of the brain port, which used to use a vibrotactile tactile display unit that was placed in the back instead of the tongue. Some of the equipment necessary per device will be a miniature camera, a microphone, a microcontroller, either an RF or digital receiver and transmitter, Wi-Fi capabilities, tongue vibrotactile tactile electro display like, it is, like the image here on the right, a vibration motor for bone vibration audio perception, a control panel uh, which would have to have these software features which are electrode intensity, image contrast, volume, broadcastability, channel change, and tuned in users. Support necessary for this project will be in engineering, the hardware troubleshooting, software coding for networks, and Android development. From neurology, it will be brain functions and MRIs or other scan of activity while processing other senses and sensory processing. From the public, we will need willingness to participate, feedback, and an exhibition space. And financial needs will be sufficed by grants, fundraising and investors, and from a personal fund. Execution. Common sense would be best deployed as a continuous project. Ideally, the transmission signal could be strong enough to reach any corner of the world, perhaps using Android development kit and a cell phone or a Wi-Fi. This way, users can truly experience the world through others' eyes and ears. This project can also be contained in a specific area for prototyping purposes. If the project needs to be deployed in a specific space for a limited amount of time, users will have to be warned that the perception of the vision through vibrotactile electrode tongue stimulation takes from 2 to 10 hours to become effective. Because your brain needs to learn how to process these new vibrotactile waves uh, through your visual cortex. Also, for hygienic reasons, the users will each have to purchase their own device. We don't want to be sued for any bio um, problems. The sound stimulation will be immediate, as bone conduction is a shortcut, shortcut of how sound is perceived by the ear. The space will have to be visually interesting and designed for the visual resolution of the tongue display, which is 400 to 600 pixels per image. 
Sound installations will also be required in order to make the auditory experience more salient. Results analysis. The results could be neurological if uh, there is an MRI or other scans analyzing brain activity while using this network or perhaps any other studies. Psychological analysis of a user while experiencing other senses, um, perhaps analyzing behavioral change. Social interactivity patterns may arise as other people are, may be trying to find the channels which their friends are in or simply um, somebody they would like to maybe be or they can they admire. Uh, new modes of usability can also arise from seeing the interaction of people wearing this device and being part of this network. Sambiguation, new applications for this project. Um, progress, um, the next generation uh, would be great to have and incorporating the feedback into the next generation and the evaluation of the whole. Context and precedence. This project is largely inspired and informed by the work of Dr. Paul Bakurita on sensory substitution and prosthetics. His devices such as the brain port, which this is this project is totally based on, which is on the top right, um, were non-invasive and expanded on the studies of elasticity of the mind. And Bakurita said, this is his famous words, we see with our brains, not with our eyes. The Living Book of Sen uh, Senses by Diane Gromola, which is an immersive uh, digital installation. The Loto Lab Studio by Dr. Bo Loto, which is an amazing uh, science uh, space dedicated to the senses where they have many exhibitions and they also um, help or host the beta tank which it created the eye candy can and the mind chair and these are kind of spoofs from designers of um, visual imagery that is supposed to relax you using Bakurita's um, research and devices. Uh, other precedents uh, is the test lab multimodal exhibition that happened in Rotterdam in 2008, um, which happened to have Tom Forsey's inactive torch, which is exactly um, trying to use sensory substitution of vibrotactile uh, information. And here on the right, we have on the top right we have the um, image of this project and it kind of describes all the other components that are part of it and it also this uh, exhibition multimodal also had work from uh, Cecil Tolassus who created work on the smell of sphere of men and um, work from Seedskid Kluster uh, which was an installation of touch and sound which would encourage people to touch each other uh, by creating new sounds. And the audio tooth implant by Augur Lozio, which uh, is kind of going through the auditory aspect part of the project rather than the, than the sensory part of the project. And... Um, Sound bite by the exp uh, an exploratorium exhibit, which shows uh, demonstrates the bone conduction hearing with a rod, and you're able to bite it and hear through your teeth, and also all the other social networking sites uh, that humans have an untamable urge to share their experiences through. Conclusion. Uh, common sense is the exploration of a sense-sharing network, where individuals wear devices that broadcast their sight and auditory senses. These transmitted senses are then received by other users in an array of channels. Creating this network will be challenging from, an, from acquiring or rebuilding the necessary tongue display to the transmission of from one device to the other. For iteration and prototyping purposes, the first uses of the common sense network will have to happen in a closed environment, 
where the visual and auditory information is created to be perceived with this low resolution device and where hygiene and other factors can be dealt with in a controlled environment. High contrast, desaturated images and objects will be created for this exhibition, accompanied by sound installations. There's an opportunity for this exhibition to feature other artists that will like to participate in creating objects tailored to this experience. People participating in Common Sense will have a unique experience of sharing their most used senses, hearing and sight, given that they do have them. If they don't, then they can maybe see with other people's eyes. Although the information's quality is not to entire fidelity, the interpretation and psychological effects on having another sensory experience simultaneous with one's own could be fascinating. And I'm really excited to see this project come to fruition and hopefully um, people will take interest in this proposal. Thank you so much for listening.